Hi there, everyone. I'm just going to shift this around a little bit. Welcome to Love Advice. I am Susan Winter, trying to find the right image here. I'm so happy all of you could join me today. I see we've got our fabulous moderators, B. Ray. We've got Gwyneth Sharp, Sister Anastasia is here. Thank you, all of you. Um, today's conversation is love versus in love. And I think this is an important one because the distinction is truly palpable. If you are in a relationship and you're madly in love with your partner and yeah, they love you, you know that they care for you, but you just, you know, there's like, they're not in fifth gear. It, you feel like there's a trap door. If you could just get them to open it, it's really very dismantling in the relationship. And then conversely, there are those of you out there who love somebody. You're in a good partnership. You should be crazy about them. And you know that they're a good person and they're madly in love with you, but you love them, but you're clear that you're not in love with them. So do we need to be in love in order to have a good relationship? When do we stay? When do we go? These are the questions that I'm discussing with you today. And let me start by thanking my fabulous mods, B. Ray, who's in Germany. By the way, all these Thursdays that I've been here, B does an entire day's work as an essential worker in Germany. She's a dentist, finishes up, does all this admin and her dental work day in and day out, all throughout COVID, and then comes back and is here for me on the show and to support all of us to have a safe place to talk along with Gwyneth Sharps, who's in Great Britain. Thank you, Gwyneth. And sometimes Alex Flips stops in. So thank you, everyone. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Sam. Cece, how are you doing? Sister Anastasia is here today. I know she can't always make it. We've got a Gnarly Cat, Jean P, Kim Turner, Luann. Uh, <laughs> hi, everyone. Ellen Johnston, Jessica, Jean. So if you have any questions about this, I would urge you to put it through to Super Chat. But let me start with the uh, question that inspired me. So, you know, I have a video request section. It is susanwinter.net. And on the last page uh, where it says contact, that's where at the very bottom of the page there is um, a bar underneath media where it's got Lauren's address. And, and the bar says video requests, and that's where you all write me. And so what's really cool about that is I can't, you know, I only do one video every Tuesday. That's pre-recorded. But then I look at some of these, and I'm like, wow, this is a really great topic for today. So today we are going to talk about that, that question and the distinction between love and in love. So many of you are trying to figure out whether you should stay or go because you fall on either side of that equation. Okay, so here we go. Whoops, I gotta turn this around. Okay, here we go. Um, this question is from Will. So Will, thank you for this. And Will writes, hi Susan, I've been dating this girl for a little over three years. She's my very best friend and I love her very much. The only problem is I'm not in love with her. Whenever we're together, we have the most amazing time, and each day is a new adventure. The only problem is I'm not romantically attracted to her, meaning I am not in love with her. Is this relationship doomed? Thank you for reading this. Now, here's where I have to be really clear. The conditions that you are experiencing around this situation are very unique to you. I do not have, and nobody should give you a blanket, stay or go. It all depends upon the situation. There are times that somebody would look from the outside and say, oh, you're not attracted to, of course you should scrap the relationship. But there are other benefits. And yet at the same time, we're not saying, stay in a relationship with somebody that you're not attracted to. Now, here's the thing. Will, you are describing really the ideal of a partner. It is a sexy best friend. You've got the best friend part. You're dating this person, so you are romantic with them, but you think you're not attracted to them. 
But that could be because in your experience of intense passion, you didn't know where you stood. We oftentimes will analyze a very healthy, but rather, I don't want to say flatline, but healthy relationships have their ups and downs. But a healthy relationship does not look like this. That is a hot and cold, in and out, don't know where I stand, oh my gosh, pushes every bit of buttons that you have. And that that roller coaster ride is what many people think love is because they're out of control. So people assume that being in love means I'm completely irrational and out of control. I'm in love because I can't sleep at night. I'm in love because I can't think straight. Actually, you've got so many chemicals going through your body. You're in the flush of probably the honeymoon phase with somebody who's hot and cold with you. Again, this has to be tempered. You will each, every one of you will have to analyze the merit of what you've got. Long-term relationships, why do you think they keep writing to people like me and saying, how do we keep the love alive? You know, love changes. In the beginning, it's very physical and very sexual because it's all new. You got to get all over that person 10 years later. You know, every move they're going to make in the bedroom, it's like it's not the same. But then you also know that they were the ones that you woke up to when you came out of, I don't know, anesthesia. And they were there by the hospital side and they never left your bed. I mean, it changes. The depth of love changes. And this is why we have to keep finding ways to grow together. But for somebody like Will, without, without me having the possibility to ask him all sorts of additional questions, uh, I mean, you have so much fun with this person and, you know, you want to be with her. The question is, were you ever romantically attracted to her? Or are you so comfortable that she's just become like a sister and like a buddy? Um, but here's the part that's really exciting. You say, Will, that every day is a new adventure. That's what it should be with somebody where you're in love. That, that is like every day feels like a new adventure with somebody that you're in love with because there is a new awareness as to who you are in their presence and you discover things together. So I wonder, without having you in a consultation, I wonder if somebody else out there in a case like this is thinking to themselves, I know I've got this crazy hair that's driving me nuts. Um, I'm wondering if you are comparing the stability that you have today to a chaotic, out of control, hot and cold, crazy making relationship that at the time felt like love because it was so intense. So there are reasons that we stay in relationships. Their long standing relationships, long lasting relationships are not always going to be um, driven by sexual passion. They're going to ebb and flow. And that's why in a relationship, when you have a, an established partnership, you want to keep experiencing new things with your partner in order to keep it fresh. Many of you know when you first started talking to somebody like how, how many of you have had like a six hour phone call or, or, you know, a FaceTime with somebody that you've newly met and it's like, oh my God, you can't stop talking to each other. There's going to be a time that you're going to get through that. You're going to have a functional life together and you're not going to want to talk to them for six hours. You're going to want them to go away for six hours so you can go do your thing. But this is normal. There are different levels of love. So this is what I want to talk about today. And I'm going to answer your questions. Now, if you do have a specific question for me, please put it in super chat. Um, otherwise, I will grab what I can, but I might miss yours. I know that sometimes you have problems with super chat and my wonderful mods help you. I know that they do that. I don't know why. I'm not a technical person. I don't, I don't touch anything weird here. I don't know what's going on. So um, I would ask you to do that. Um, Let's see. Uh, okay, you're all talking to each other. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Do, does anybody have a question for me? Susan, I've had this recently with unrequited love for a friend. I had to walk away. Uh, Tom Black. Hi. 
Well, you know, sometimes we get friend zoned. Sometimes we're the ones going, hold off, I'm just a friend. Um, it has to be there for both people. There has to be something that is beyond friendship, that there has to be some spark or some attraction. And you are right that if you have had a crush and an attraction to a friend and it's not reciprocated, the best thing you can do is leave because otherwise it's self-defeating. If they have you in that box, they have you in that box. Many people have been friend zoned. I have um, some men that I know. They're perfectly lovely, but I'm gonna be honest. They're not the number one guy that a woman would run toward. And it's, they just, there's something about them. Either they don't have enough, they don't have enough something or other. They're very nice, but they don't have, and I, and I wanna say game, but I don't mean game game. I mean, they just don't have that thing. It can be cultivated. It can be learned, whether it's charming conversation or a little bit of flirtation or a higher self-esteem, but we all have to have some form of banter, some form of allure that creates interest in the other person. And if we don't have it and we're just that nice, <laughs> a lot of these guys are like, um, I know these guys are kind of like a golden retriever. My, my friend who is the ultimate player described them, described one of these men as he said, it's, he's like a golden retriever puppy that's on his back going Duh! like that. And women don't look at him and go, yeah, wow, I want that to be my man. They're like, oh yeah, he's a nice guy. Next. Okay. So the same is true with women that we can try too hard and, and it doesn't matter whether you're straight or gay. It, there is a certain kind of allure that people have when they take care of themselves. Uh, they work a little bit, put a little effort into their appearance. They feel confidence in their accomplishments. They have an easy ability to have a conversation and to start banter. They know when to leave a conversation to keep another person interested without giving everything away. Uh, they walk with confidence. There's, there's a lot of things that we can do to make ourselves more alluring. And it could just be that we're with somebody that doesn't quite do it for us. And in that case, you probably do want to leave because part of the relationship model in monogamous love designs is that you want to have a level of attraction to your partner. At least in the beginning, things are going to change. You know, people, women have babies and men get busy and their bodies get out of shape and stuff happens and life has other priorities. But we want to at least have an attraction that separates this person from all others, where we feel a connection to them that we want to express physically. And that is a part of the romantic model. Otherwise they would be a straight up friend. But I oftentimes think that the reason that we find somebody unattractive or we're not feeling chemistry is really not about the exterior. It's not even about game or no game. I think it's that there isn't enough in that person to excite and challenge us this way. I'm guessing there's something about them that isn't enough. It's good, but it's not enough. Okay. Many people have long lasting, good relationships. Uh, they say it's not bad, but it's not great. And it's a get by relationship. And that could be the compromise. If you need that partner for financial security, if they need you, so I know there was a super chat. Let me answer this because I saw it come up here. Ah, Gene P. Hi, doll. It's uh, $4.99. Anything you want to say? Okay. Um, weird constellation. I'm in contact with a girl who is in a relationship, but who is deeply in contact with me and would choose me if it wasn't long distance. I feel like nothing is changing between us. 
You know, um, long distance, first of all, you, you got a couple problems here. You've got long distance and you've got this person in another partnership. What they say they can do without being with you is completely different than what they can do in real life if they're with you. So I don't put a lot of stock in somebody saying, gee, I really would be with you if I were in town, because what they're doing is doing what's convenient. So I would be a little cautious about allowing yourself to be the object of flirtation for them if they're not going to step up. I mean, that's just my initial feeling. Jean, do you have any questions here? Oh, here. I don't know if I should believe in the relationship as much as I did before. So far, it's been great, but I'm nervous and not sure what to do. Jean, did you have something you said before this? Because I feel like I'm coming in on part two. So please continue speaking. Oh, Galactic Woman, hi. Isn't love meant to be felt as deep peace? Isn't this the issue? Oh, here is Jean P. Okay. Um, Now you're talking about love. Love, how do I say this? You know, this is like trying to define God. I'm gonna do the best I can do and you have your own versions. The sense of feeling loved by another individual, galactic woman, correct. It feels, you feel safe. You feel like you're okay. And we need to feel that in a relationship. Oftentimes in the people that we claim we're in love with, these hot and cold players and lovers that come into our lives, you never feel safe, right? Those, think of the most extreme examples that you've had of relationships where you have totally lost your mind over this person. You never felt safe. And that was part of the intensity of the emotion. But love, is a deep knowing that you are inherently okay because this person really loves you. You're safe, you're supported, you're loved. It's not whimsical, it's the real deal. It's precious and it means a lot. And that's why there are so many people that have deep consternation when they know that they are involved with somebody that has a deep and abiding love for them. And they love them, but they know in their heart of hearts, I see all the value you have. I am so grateful for the way that you love me. But in my heart of hearts, I don't feel like you're the one. You're just not. Something about this is a dead end for me, in spite of all that you're giving me. I know I had a partner and I can only describe it like this. When I knew he was finally in love with me, and he really put me through it for his, his own insecurity, okay? And I was exhausted, and I think that really tainted. how I could never, I knew he was just doing a lot to dismantle me so he could feel superior. Uh, but at the end of it, this was a really good person that had finally decided to love, <laughs> because it is a decision. And I, I felt like being with him would be climbing into a box and closing the lid like a trap door, that I would have an exceedingly small life. And I thought, wow, this solid love from a good person or who knows what, nothing, maybe nothing, maybe nobody. I chose freedom. That's me that that was my choice. I would rather have freedom and not suffocate. But I have a lot of other things in place. It depends upon your circumstance. Do you need that partner because you've got three kids to raise? Do you, yeah, I didn't have any of those things. So it makes a difference. You've got to take a look at every single factor, right? All right, let me go back. Jean, I saw something here. Keep an eye open for my can't pay and ask. Some people are having problems with Super Chat. I understand that. All right, so what do we have here? Guten Tag. Hello. I'll be in Munich pretty soon, a couple months from now. Listen, everybody, I want you to go to susanwinter.net, the bottom of the homepage, 
the newsletter, please fill it out. I'm going to be in Munich, Dubrovnik, Split, and Sorrento. Love, love, love to meet all of you. Love to meet my audience. We're planning something in Munich, but I need to let everybody get together on it. I'm not going to give you specifics here, okay? It's going to all be through the newsletter because I need to know know that it's a controlled environment. We're going to get, you know, my media director a hold of you. We want to make sure that everybody's safe and everything's good. Okay, so what do we have here? Sister Anastasia, hello, my dear. Love you, brilliant Susan. How do I just love one whom I'm in love with? Um, need to, okay, hang on here. How do I just love one who I'm in love with? Need to friend zone the one with who we're chaotically attracted at work and keep a healthy friendship, which we used to have at the start. Boy, I'm, I'm a little confused about the verbiage. I so want to help you here. I've got to read this one more time. Oh my goodness. I'm not quite sure where this is coming from. Help me out here. Be, uh, Gwyneth B, do you, do you understand which direction it's coming from? I really want to answer this. How do I just love the one who I'm in love with? I don't know what you mean, love platonically. Um, need to friend zone the one with who we're chaotically attracted to at work. All right, let me start that. You don't even need to friend zone them. If you are chaotically attracted to somebody at work, that's all game going on. Okay, you've got to develop a dislike for disharmony. We, we have to train ourselves actually train ourselves to dislike and not be attracted to chaos, hot and cold and drama and people playing with us because people love to play. It's a great game. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm in Arizona right now and we have every, I'm in the raw desert in the middle of a national forest, believe it or not, like this little community in the middle of a national forest got every predator in the world for little Nika. Okay. There is a snake training class where they take the dogs and expose them to a real snake. Okay. But they have the little zap around their neck so that when the dog gets close and it's, it doesn't electrocute them, it just, it vibrates. And if it has to, it has a small pulse. They teach the dogs to not be interested because the dogs want to sniff and it's going to kill them. Very few dogs survive the venom of a rattlesnake bite, it's really serious. Especially little rattlers, immature rattlers, don't know how to measure it. They will give you the full dose and you will, very few humans live. By the time you get to a hospital, it could be three, $4,000 for the antidote. Most people won't pay it. So here's the thing. We have to attune ourselves, just like the dogs being trained with the snake, to not be attracted to anybody. You don't even friend zone them. If it, at best, Sister Anastasia, you are cordial, polite, and rather dismissive. If it's somebody at work, unless you have these long hours that you have to put in, you really don't need to associate with them that much other than whatever is absolutely necessary. And I want you to, if any of you are trying to learn how to friend zone somebody that you've been chaotically attracted to that has made you crazy, I really think if you could harness this person into a really solid partner, I guarantee you, I bet you money, you would be bored to death. There is a component to people who play games like this. They know, I believe they know in their heart of hearts that they are common and boring and they play game, all this fluff, to make you think there's something there that you want. And they keep coming to you and running away from you just to engage your excitement and the capture and the chase, to start the chase. Everything looks better when it's running away from us. First, it comes up to us. We ignore it. We take it for granted that it runs away. Now, suddenly it has greater value. Have you ever noticed in marketing, the people, okay, online, how many people have sold you a package? How to find love in... 12 hours, do this and get the man of your dreams. These techniques will work to get the woman you want. I mean, they sell you these, and it's like all this marketing, all this advertising, cartoons and voiceovers and pages and pages of I was fat, now I'm thin, I had nobody, now I have the love of my life. You can be like me, pay this money. And when you get the material, it's like, what? You didn't tell me anything. 
I find that the greater the fluff, the more one needs the marketing and all the branding and all this stuff to flash. People with real stuff don't need to do that. So I know I'm trying to go into one of these discussions for you, Sister Anastasia. I don't quite understand where this is coming from. You keep a healthy friendship we used to have from the start. If you've got somebody that's chaotic, you really never did have a healthy friendship. You just had a flirtation that felt normal. But if it's become chaotic, there's too much stuff going on in that other person. Either they're internally in conflict, they're making you crazy, you're making them crazy. It's not worth it. Real stuff doesn't, it doesn't have this much stuff to it. Really fabulous relationships don't have all this gunk. Okay. I, I hope that helps you. And if not, please write me privately and I will answer this more adequately because I, I'm not sure that I fully understood this. Okay, Julio, hi, $20. Thank you so much, Julio. Um, tried friends with an ex, but got confused and rejected again. Okay, okay. Told him the friendliest thing to do would be to let me go entirely. All right. Um, but he's not the one that lets you go, my dear. You have yourself go. Okay. He doesn't have the power over that. Now he occasionally hearts my Facebook post pics wearing the bracelet. I got him what to do. Well, Julio, you're the one that ends this, not him. So you gave an ex a second chance. The ex did the same thing as they did before. No wonder it confused you. It sh it's not confusing. This is not a match for you. It's really rather simple. We make it so complicated and we try to read all these meanings into these things. And it's really rather simple. This is not a workable relationship for you. Of course, he wants to make nice, nice. Everybody likes what I call a good review. He doesn't want to be hated, but most of you. Okay, wait. Almost everybody who is still romantically and sexually attracted to their ex dare not consider a friendship. Not yet. Not until you can look at that person, see them 360, not just like, oh my God, they're so amazing. How come they didn't love me? You've got to have no sexual attraction left and you've got to not want them as a partner. You've got to see all of them. So the bubble has to burst from the honeymoon. And then they're a friend. They can be a friend later, but not now. So a lot of you are going to have this problem when you go back in to try and be friendly with an ex or even to be friendly, Sister Anastasia, with a coworker that you had a good relationship with and then it became chaotic and now it isn't. You know, just be cordial until we get them out of our system, until we get grounded. All right. We can't really afford that luxury. Are there any other questions here? Ah, uh, Nam, thank you so much. Thank you for all of your wisdom, Susan. You're an inspiration. Thank you. Oh, my wonderful, my wonderful people here. Uh, my um, uh, Tom Black, my friend Chris Camping says, hi, Susan from UK. He is a super fan. Fabulous. Tell him hello. Tell him hello. Hello. Uh, let's see what else. My friend, oh, says he loves the painting behind you. Gorgeous. Thank you. I actually hired a decorator to help me because um, if, if any of you have worked with me in this, in this home and you've worked with me on Zoom, you're going to see a background that I did some black and whites of my family. My, my father's been dead for like 30, 40 years. My mother's been dead for 20 years. And uh, this was a vacation home of theirs, a winter home. They lived in Denver. I never lived here, but I took this over as a writer's retreat. And so I kind of made like a little homage to my family. And that's really sweet. And yet at the same time, I realized there's no adult Susan here. There's baby Susan everywhere around here. And I wanted something a little bit different. And so the decorator goes, oh, we've got to have this. And I'm like, okay. And I, and I do like it. Thank you for that. Um, okay, any other questions? I wear jewelry from my ex-husband, but I don't have feelings. Just love the jewelry. Cece, great. Thank him for that. Yeah, very nice. Gwyneth Sharps, okay. I see another comment under that, not yours. Please, can you copy and paste, Gwyneth? Thank you. 
Jean P, okay, I'll try one more time to retype. Be ready. We are trying to help you out. Uh, Tom, thank you. Love you too. Um, I've been talking about having a trip to the UK. I have a lot of people I like there and a lot of wonderful fans there. So um, Barbara and I have been talking about maybe the UK and Scotland. I've been in Edinburgh. I've been in London. And I know the middle of the UK always kind of like Birmingham. That always gets kind of passed over. Everybody's got to go way south. So every year we talk about a different trip where we're going to see all of you. Let's see. Any more questions? All right. So Julio, you know what to do. You just keep moving. Okay. Hi, Susan. How can you deal with a guy who wants to keep everything online and doesn't want to go further into a relationship or to meet up in person? Well, sweetie, mistress of darkness, we don't even know that he's a for real guy. One, you think he's a guy, might not be. Two, you think he's single, may not be. No, If, if somebody always keeps you online, you got to say, why? Some people are so, so good at this. I have a dear friend who was, and she's good at game. And I talked about this a couple of years ago here online. She had a online lover. That was it. They were in love. He got her to close down her profiles. They used to FaceTime. So she actually saw him. Oh, he's out of town. He's on an oil rig outside of Turkey. I'm like, okay, now you're into energy. I know a little bit about this. Who does he work for? What is he doing? She said, no, he's got some kind of like, and I said, I don't understand. What are you talking about? Oh, he's from South Africa. And I said, oh, tell him I'm doing a radio show with so-and-so today in South Africa and see if he knows him. None of these things. She had a scammer. And eventually he said, oh, you know, I can't get back. And I've got that home that I bought for us. And we believe what we want to believe. Because sometimes the dream is just so delicious. If somebody won't make time to meet you in real life, why are you making time to love them in your heart? I don't get it. We've got to be smarter than this. Not everybody out there is serious. Online is an anonymous cesspool of people. There's no accountability. They hide behind a face, a profile. Maybe it's not even them. And I'm pleased if I say these things, it's just that you've got to realize how many of your letters I get every day coming through our portals, how many times I've heard the same story, how many clients I've dealt with trying to get over a love that never happened, a love that's online. And many people fall in love, even on Facebook. I've had a very mature, beautiful former Ford model out here in Arizona have a man who love bombed her online. Don't you know, after two years, she actually, just to get resolution, made a trip to where he lived. He was married. He was married. I mean, it's like, how do you miss that? How do you hide it? And yet they did. You know, if they don't move forward, there's good reason. And all you have to say to yourself is, I don't need to spend X amount of dollars on the tarot reader <laughs> to tell me what they're thinking. I don't need to read 500 articles and I don't need to go online with every expert to see what they say about it. Sometimes, you know what? They're not showing up. They're not going to show up. It's that simple. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, $5. Anya, hi, dear. How are you doing? Hi, Susan. Great topic. Is being in love something that both partners can cultivate or reboot consistently before it fades away? Yes. Yes, I know you're in a committed relationship, and I know that Jennifer is in a committed relationship. So I know, oh, Jillian, and I know that there are a lot of you that are. Yes, you can. So I'm going to urge you, if you're in the U.S., Canada, U.K., or Australia, if you haven't already, please download for free and listen to How to Grow Together. It's on Himalaya. I can give it to people free with the code. It's at the bottom. It's in the description here through maybe June of this year, they extended it. And then after that, you have to buy it. I don't own it. I can't give it to you any other way. I don't have it myself. I'll never see it. I can't sell it. You have to reboot. And part of it is I would suggest you find what's called a third thing. I had a friend named Lloyd Guten years ago, one of these like people that comes into your life and then they leave. And he said, Susan, 
My therapist told me that everybody needs a third thing, every couple. So he and his partner had the third thing was dancing. But sometimes an external thing, whether it's salsa or rock climbing, or you do marathons together, or you love cooking Sunday, you have a thing that every Sunday you get together and you're watching somebody on television go through some cooking class and you're doing it together. Classic cars, I don't know, sci-fi movies, whatever your thing is, these little things that we cultivate that are new, Anya, beyond what you two have done before, that can help re-spark the connection because in long-standing relationships, we need to have new input come into our relationship. What oftentimes happens in a long-standing relationship is that we get very much into the routine of it. And, you know, we're not talking so lovey-dovey with our partner. We come in and we go, did you take out the trash? I get, Listen, we just, the insurance bill you did not pay. You said you were going to, oh, do I have to do everything? This is the kind of conversation you have day in and day out, Right. And at night, you're just so exhausted from both of your jobs, you want to come home and watch Netflix, and you're on your phone, and your partner is maybe, I don't know, doing something or other. It's easy to grow apart. So new input that excites both of you that can be done together is absolutely vital. And if you're going to say, ah, oh, my partner's like, they don't want this, I've suggested that, just keep going, go through the Rolodex, keep getting brave as to what you ask them to do. Um, I'm doing something. Um, that I've never done before. So I have a hip replacement. Okay. Um, and, and so I can't skydive because the fall, if you break, when you fall with a hip replacement, you shatter your pelvis. Okay. Um, and so they say to me, you know, you're so young. Why did you have this happen? Did you ever have an accident? I'm like, okay, bucked off my fat pony. How many times dragged down a staircase by my sled dog? How many times, you know, stuff like that fall down on the ice skating rink. <laughs> But at any rate, so why am I saying this about the hip replacement? So I asked my friend to take me, it's called iFly. You're in this um, tube with air that makes you like fly. That's a new experience for me. I've never done that before. Is it scary? Yeah. Could that day be like a hit on the generators and all the electricity goes out? Maybe, maybe. But, um, you know, so to challenge ourselves, is also a way to spark the partner who is maybe a little slow to get going. You know, have you've ever had one partner that they decide to get in shape? The first thing you're thinking is, oh God, are they having an affair, right? Because now they're at the gym all the time. It's like, okay, now you're looking really good. Now you're scaring me because I'm like on this big project and I can't do this, but one will inspire the other. And sometimes we can start something together Maybe your partner is the inspiration for you to level up in some aspect of your life. So yes, new input, Anya. And um, a longstanding love doesn't necessarily fade away, but it needs to be reinvented. As you grow, you need to, you need to create a growth model within your relationship. And so for all of you that don't do individuals. And I know the price keeps getting more expensive because I have less and less time. I'm going to be starting a group class in about six months to a year on how to, how to grow, how to on evolutionary designs and how to reconnect with what your design is. And I have to design it from scratch. Many of these courses, ongoing things take a year to develop. So I'm a little busy right now. And I, but that is my goal to have a group environment where we can really foster growth into our relationship models, whether we're single and wanting to create a relationship that works for us, we're in a relationship and want to create growth and make sure that it happens no matter where you are in the spectrum. So I hope to have that coming for you pretty soon. Thank you, Anya, for this. Uh, let's see what else. I know there was another swirling star from the UK. Thank you, four pounds, 49. What, do you have anything to say, my dear? Um, if you want us to answer you, we can find that. If I haven't seen it, let me look. I don't see it right away. I think my mods will give me arrows if I do. Uh, Tom Black again. Hi, Susan. My friend Chris, the super fan, is seeing a guy who is half his age uh, that...
feels the guy isn't being totally honest about the situation. Sex is amazing, but afterwards he goes quiet for two weeks. So, yeah, so, you know, I, I'm guessing in the, this is the gay world, you know, that th there's a time where we, we switch from pretty boy to, to daddy, and, and it's not uncommon to have a younger lover. Uh, many of my clients do. And sometimes those relationships are built on not only mutual affection, but convenience and opportunity. And maybe the younger client, although the sex is great, isn't as fully committed as, as your friend. And whether you're a female or you're a male, straight or gay, if you're having sex with somebody and it's great sex, but they're not 100% there, and you, and you want more, okay? That's the thing. You want more of them than they're willing to give. That's a hard negotiation. Sometimes they don't have it to give, not to anybody. They really don't. They haven't learned that within themselves. Other times they're giving you all that they have. So the distinction for your friend to ask is, is there more that this person could be giving to me and chooses not to? Mm, that's something I really have to think about and I have to dial back where I put them in my life. I have to now, instead of wanting more, think of them more as a delightful sexual treat that I take and say goodbye to. Do you understand? Because um, you're going to interpret for me, Tom. Okay. Um, and if, because so many times, many of you want more and you say, I want more. And remember to a man, any of you saying this, that's like, blah, blah, blah. They don't know, they don't know what you mean by that. You have to be very specific. I'd like to see you more days. I'd like to deepen this relationship. I think we can go a lot further here. Sex is great, but I think there are deeper levels to be attained. And this person may not want to do that and may not be ready to do it. So, so many people I know want to stay in a relationship with somebody that loves them, but is not in love with them. Okay. Where there are problems. And to some of these current people, again, I'm guessing, cause I don't know the extenuating circumstances of where you're at your triggers and what's going on in your relationship. But sometimes what I will advise that person is to seek to dial back their emotional involvement to more adequately equal the partner they're with. When you have a great disparity of one being totally in love and the other affection, warmth, some loving feelings, there's going to be hurt here. The, the person who wants more is going to sense that they can't get more. And so they're constantly going to be anxious and upset and fighting and bickering. And normally what they do is they start nagging and bickering or whining or they act out or don't act out or have a weird vibe or whatever's going on that works against them. And what actually we need to do is to reattune ourselves and start a really serious dialogue with ourselves saying, why am I overvaluing a person who is undervaluing me? Why am I pouring so much love into this person who is unable or unwilling to pour that love into me? Why do I have them here when they have me here? If I want to play with them and be here with them, I've got to readjust my position on this teeter-totter so that we are more balanced. So the mental discipline of dialing oneself back is really quite profound. I did it in about four hours. I had to because I was dying in this relationship. I was so honest and so open and so vulnerable and so giving. And this was a good guy, but he was just, he was the what I'm talking about earlier today, just giving me a hard time loved making me sweat. And I, part of me just got so pissed off with that. And I thought, all right, I'm going to match you. And I'm going to stay matched at your level until you progress. But I'll tell you the backside of this. Once you love them a little bit less, because you've had to, to survive, you will never, ever be able to love them like you did. And that's the sadness in that diagram. Because wouldn't it be wonderful to just love them 
without having to modulate ourselves to match their lack. Wouldn't that be awesome? But that's not the person. That's really not the person. Okay. Okay. I know somebody else had written, uh, she's getting badly scanned. Let's see. Anya. Okay. I, did I miss somebody? Uh, Sister Anastasia. Hi, love. Thank you. I hope, did I, did I kind of get it? Cause I was way out there, sweetie. And I wasn't sure I was getting it. Uh, swirling star. Ooh, talking on this topic. How do you let that bubble burst? We work together too have this on and off thing. Here's how I do it. I can only tell you how I do it. I use my mind to manage my heart in cases like this. I have to. I don't have any other recourse. I have to self-talk, rationally self-talk my mind so that it overrides my natural disposition to be loving and open and so that it, it modulates it. I, I have to imagine that I'm in a courtroom and I am placing an argument that is so compelling that I will believe it. I'm the jury and I've got to say something that Susan will absolutely buy. I can't look in the mirror and go, you're wonderful. You're fabulous. You're worth so much more. And he, she deserves you, uh, but they don't deserve you. Blah, blah, blah. I can't do it like that. I've got to actually deconstruct it, look at it, figure out what I need to do for myself, and then absolutely mentally convince myself in a way that I have no resistance to accepting it. That's how I pull myself out of the edge. How I do it is I think it through because the world is kind of logical, even when it's illogical. And things have patterns and patterns reoccur. And if you really take time to break things down, you'll realize that everything's got a pattern. All of you that are in love right now, you've also been not in love. And most everybody here has had their heart broken at least once, probably multiple times. And we've all survived. And it's just a matter of handling ourselves in a way that is loving and supportive. You know, it's fun to have a crush on somebody. It's fun to have a flirtation. And to a certain degree, the highs and lows are fun. Can we be real? It's a drug. It's a drug. The highs and lows are a drug. Oh my gosh, can I get them? Oh my God, are they going to call? Are they not going to call? Am I going to see them? Am I not going to see them? Are they going to uh, chat with me? Are they not? Oh, is today the day? Oh, what are they going to say? The anticipation, the excitement. Life can be rather routine. Love makes it kind of exciting, yeah? Well, we call it love, but interest, desire, whatever. So this is a game we play with ourselves. Come on, you know that. It's a game you play with yourself to keep yourself interested in this thing we're doing. Yeah? So that's that's how I work it out. Let's see. Did I miss anybody here? I don't want to miss you. I love this. Julia says, oh, my God, I'm going through this. Sizzy W, I guess love is the desired feeling one wishes for, but how can you, how can in love turn, how can love turn into I think you mean into in love. I guess the right ingredients are necessary for the love to come about. Um, how can in love turn into love? Are you asking how can in love turn into love? If you're in love, really in love with somebody, you already love them. If you have a love for somebody, it means... Other words that we would use are appreciation, gratitude, um, fondness of, caring for. There are lots of people I have a love for. I'm not in love with them. In love is that romantic, sexual desire that gets loaded on, which don't worry, those of you in long-term relationships, it, it ebbs and flows, okay? And so everyone in a long-term relationship are always seeking ways to keep it fresh. Sometimes the act of intimacy and sharing and being truly honest with each other in it, with really positive things um, is, is a portal to open up another person's heart and love. Love 
in its purest form without, uh, it's going to seem like a catch-22. It's going to seem like I'm talking against myself, but I also know this to be true, that if you want to create a love in another person, you opening your heart is the thing that will activate theirs. Think about it. On a smaller level, when somebody flatters you, or as I call it, praise bombs you, I've been using this word lately, and I, I know I'm going to see it in print someday, but I've been using it for about the last six months because I've had this guy praise bomb me. He's not love bombing me, but he's just like, oh my God, he thinks I'm wonderful. Guess what? I'm eating it up like a kitty with a bowl of milk. It's fabulous. I would have never looked at this man otherwise, except he keeps praise bombing me and praise bombing me and praise bombing me. And oh my God, I'm so this, I'm so that. And I'm like, I love talking to him because he does nothing but tell me things I want to hear. I, is that, did he get my interest? Yes. Am I in love? No. Does it mean it's love? No. But the fact that somebody shines their light on you, it's very seductive. And imagine if that light is really pure, but it's not needy and it's not like, Ugh, and it's just like really love. It can, I call it a dignified self-possessed love. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay, so I've got to answer more of your questions. We're getting very close to the end of our time here. Uh, let's see. Anyone else? Swirling star. Hello, my dear. I think maybe we answered some of these. I'm not sure. If I've missed anyone, please let me know. Inside galactic. Being vulnerable with them connects deeper. True. And now I want to just clarify what I use as being vulnerable. Um, I think sharing some parts of our lives that people don't know, some challenges that we've gone through, I have no problem telling a person that I'm crazy about them or telling them that I love them or that I'm falling in love with them. Not an issue with that at all. I don't... for a second anymore feel that that is um, weak or needy. If I'd said that maybe 20 years ago, it might have been. It might have had an agenda attached to it that was like, and I hope you feel the same way too. But I'm very much a fan of the monologue. And I think for clarity of certain really important things, one message, no strings attached, is the most profound to say to somebody, I truly, I truly care for you. And in, in your energy, in the bearing of how you say that, and all the vibes, I don't need you to answer back. This is my, what, this is my serving the, the, the ball over the tennis net and then I'm walking off the course, that's it. You don't need to answer back, not interested. You do, fine, just saying how it is. Okay, And I think that's exceedingly powerful and it lands completely differently. And in that way, it's not vulnerable. But vulnerability is where we open up and let somebody see the other side of us, the side that we hide. Sometimes the side that we think is unattractive is actually quite attractive. As a matter of fact, guys, heterosexual people, guys out there, when a woman asks you about yourself, actually to women you're showing a little crack in your armor where we can feel the humanity of who you are. We connect with that very strongly. That's a female thing. We like that. We don't want you to be all so wounded that we have to take care of you. And we now have to you know, tiptoe around your emotions. That's a turn off. But for a strong, confident man who opens his heart a little bit and shares something kind of private, oh, we really do bond with that. And I think, I think, and again, I'm only speaking about the relationships I know, that for men, normally, um, the very thing that women often try to hide, that they care for you, that, you know, like you want to act like I don't care about you that much, or I don't want to look, I don't want you to know how much I care about you. It is that moment of tenderness and sweetness. It could be the smallest gesture. I've heard guys tell me, the moment they fell in love with her, they had been sleeping with her. They had been dating her. They liked her. The moment they fell, fell. A Tuesday night watching Netflix and the way she put her head on their shoulder and curled up next to him. The tenderness 
I think oftentimes men think they want sex, and what they really want is tenderness and connection and the ability to feel, to feel. Because what is connection other than feeling? Feeling seen and accepted by another person. That's connection. Feeling okay and taken in and, you know, held in that safe space. So, okay. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Sister Anastasia. Here we go. Your answers are great. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to love. Oh, not be in love. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let me start with this before I go on to the second question. If you, there's a distinction. Do you just want to love somebody you were in love with? You got to talk yourself out of having them be on the pedestal. See them 360. Remember the, the crusty looking feet that they had and, you know, that the time that they weren't so great in bed. You got to remember that stuff. And then you can see them as a human being. Otherwise, you can love. You don't have to be in love. You can be loving to somebody and still have a good relationship. It just depends on what your ultimate reason for partnering is. And then another question, if a partner doesn't text, call, but seems to love you in other ways, how do you get past the insecurity of him not calling? So here's where your words are kind of flipping on each other. Um, you, you think this, per you say the person seems to love you. And yet at the same time, that must not be sinking in because you need confirmation by texting and calling. So this is where I'm a little. So there are people that absolutely love us and we know it. We know it. But they don't demonstrate it in any of the traditional ways. They may not say I love you, but we know that they love us and they're there for us. And there are people like that. What you could do if you feel that this person genuinely cares for you is say, look, here's what makes me very happy. I would love to get a text or a call from you on a regular basis, like one every day. I need that. I need that so that I can feel, continue to feel this way toward you. It's, it's, it's the fuel that I need. Leave it there. See what they say. I think a lot of times our partner does not understand what we need to feel connected to them. But with most people, be very specific. Short speak, little speak, very specific. Do not go into, we need to talk. And then like by hour two, you're getting around to what you think you need. Oh my God, the person's going to just be like, Bleh. simple. I need Contact on a regular basis, you yeah. know, once a day, phone call, text message. It makes me very happy. It's what I need. It's that little bit of fuel. So try that. Okay. And then see what happens. All right. Uh, let's see. Wait, there's something good here. Mira, Susan, I like this. <laughs> what is your definition of love? Do you believe, do you agree with Corinthians 13 Bible, Bible verse, uh, definition of love? Just curious. Um, okay, boy, I, I think I know generally, but I am not a student of this. Um, is this where the love is all giving in the purest sense? Yes. That it seeks not for itself. Yeah. Yeah. But right now we're on YouTube and right now I'm dealing with people that are trying to probably master some people in the workplace a lot of people online and a lot of people coming in and out of their life in the dating world. So the discussion is tempered a little bit differently. All right. If we were in uh, a Christian setting where the mentality of everybody here is of that understanding, I could hold a partner to a different standard because of where we enter. I'm dealing with a huge population here on YouTube. I hate to say it, but it's a lot like porn. It's like, you, what did the guy say in the Senate Council? I don't know how to describe it, but I know it when I see it. I know what love feels like. 
I know what real love feels like. Now, I know what the love of a father for a daughter feels like. I know what it's like to be loved unconditionally from my father. I know that feeling. I was blessed with that. And I know what it's like to be loved by a man. I know what it's like to be loved by my friends. I know what it's like to be loved by a man who cannot overcome his own issues to fully function. Still loved, but cannot function. So I think true love in the purest sense, oh God, this is difficult. And I pulled it out because I like difficult questions. Real love does think about the other person's benefit. Probably in true love, you would immediately rush to their defense, to their safety, to help them without thinking of yourself. I know I do. If I love somebody, the last, but also the cost of love and friendship should not be me constantly sacrificing myself, my safety, my serenity, and my security for somebody. This is like an an emergency situation, right? I have had people that I know love me as a friend or maybe want more, but my association with them is friendly and loving in my treatment of them, kind, loving, thoughtful, adding quality to their life, doing things for them. But at the same time, it's not fair to me to have it cost me serenity, tranquility. I shouldn't be constantly, you know, so we're, what we're looking for here in these discussions is a balance in romantic love. You want to be able to give and have it feel free to give without keeping score. But at the same time, you need to be aware of the fact of being in tune with yourself. When your tank is on empty and you suddenly wake up to the feeling that you've never kept score before, but now you're aware that you're giving out much more than you're getting back. That means whatever I'm doing is way overpacing the partner I'm with. And this is where so many of us have to recalibrate ourselves and say, wait a minute, I need to have a discussion with my partner. I need to be clear first on what it is that I need. And then I need to express that. Maybe it's not their fault. Maybe they've just gotten comfortable with me doing all the work. How delicious. They get to be loved and I get to serve them. So it should be reciprocal, right? I hope I've answered that in a way that's understandable, but it's just, that's a very, very big question. Here, Before we jump off of here, I agree in sharing what we need. Is it a bad sign if they comply initially, but then they can't sustain what is needed long-term? No. um, Well, everybody starts out rather energetically in the honeymoon phase. We start to learn around month six to the first year if it is sustainable. And again, remember all of our loving romantic partnerships are experiments in and of themselves. We are seeing day in and day out, can we continue to grow with this partner? Can we continue to invest in this relationship? We feel that it's worthy, so we continue to invest and we see it grow. And there'll be times that we see it go stagnant and we want to reboot it again. And that is a community effort that's got to be both people. So that's all a relationship is. Can we honestly say, oh, I know I'm gonna be here 50 years from now? Yes, you can say it. But we, I think we've turned a corner and understand that love is no longer just enduring our life together and then finally dying because we just didn't wanna upset things and have a change. I think we've come in the 21st century to the understanding that we have far more autonomy and that our great responsibility is also to ourselves to be in alignment with ourselves, living our greatest life, expressing ourselves in the greatest way, and that the loving partner by our side, we should be in harmony with them. They should be helping us to be our greater selves and we should be doing the same for them. And that that is ultimately a growth filled and positive environment for us to be our greater selves. If you're in a relationship that is zapping your energy and every day you are just trying to get up, stand up on your feet and survive, 
you really have to think twice about this person that you've chosen to love. Is it duty? Why are you there? Because it is really not helping you. And for each one of us, we have a duty to ourselves. And this is not selfishness. But if you're here to do a purpose, you came to this life to do something meaningful. You've got a lot more depending upon you than one person. You may have a community that you take care of. You may have people that you assist in your business. So you have, instead of one person that drains your energy and you're trying to sort that out, you need to think of the hundreds or thousands that ultimately you serve by your presence here and whatever it is that you're up to. That's a bigger mission. So if you're having trouble separating yourself from somebody, think bigger, okay? I hope that I've gotten to much of this. Uh, let's see. It's when you want to give without being transactional. True galactic woman. You all have some wonderful, wonderful things here. I, Oh, Jean P. Couldn't make her part one of Super Chat uh, go through, but would like to... <laughs> Buy a toy for Nika with the money, you sweet thing. Okay, this is great. I will add your money to, I just got a little certificate from like um, Pet, no, Petco or something for a $5 coupon because I went to an animal training course yesterday um, and we will get her a, a, a toy. She is, she loves balls. Okay, so I wrote Nika's dating profile, hashtag must love balls. We will get her a squeaky ball. She likes the little ye yellow tennis balls, and the one I have is so disgusting. And they chew and chew, and she loves the little. <coughs> so we will give Nika a squeaky ball from you. Okay, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate that, Jean P. You know, listen, so many of you write me, and you are so sweet, and you in the videos I put out on Tuesday, not just me, everybody, they've now added money signs. You can contribute in a video that you see. If you see that little money icon, it's like share, like, heart. Um, and it, there's now a little money sign. You can give people that you like here, you like their message, you can give them a dollar or two or whatever you feel comfortable by pushing that button. It's um, available super chat here, but then I have not seen it on the replays. But do know Nika is being well tended to. Yes, she is. She has play dates. Uh, Nika had a very cute profile. It was um, seeking a companion to survey city smells, must love long walks in the park, and chasing the ball. Yes. Uh, what was it? I think it's uh, 11 inch, 11 inch uh, tall, natural blonde with athletic build, seeking companionship and fun. So yes, thank you, everyone. Um, this is fabulous. All of you are so lovely. Uh, okay, so I think I'm going to have to leave pretty soon, Susan. Please can I ask a favor? Please tell people in your live to pray for my boyfriend, Divyesh. Oh, he is fighting COVID in an ICU. Okay, everybody, we're just going to take a moment here to grab our thoughts together and think of strength and beauty and power of the individual and ask the heavens to open up for your partner who's in ICU in COVID. All this positive energy is going through to him and to the healthcare workers assisting him. Okay. Thank you for that. I think this is precious. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Okay. The smartest lady online, Susan. Okay, everyone. Um, we're going to sign off for now. I will be back next week. So Will, I hope you were with us today. Just so you know, if you send one of these, and I know that I'm going to do it for a live show, I contact you and let you know, by the way, we're going to be on the live show. So I want you to be able to contribute to this. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you, thank you. And oh, I'm going to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already, put on the notification bell. Look for some really interesting things in the next couple of weeks. You know I was collecting your money for a while now. Yes, your contributions. And remember when I told you I wanted to do something special? 
I have the final clips of Best Worst Date, which all of you voted on. We saw everybody. You're going to be seeing it for free right before Valentine's Day. I want to thank all of you. That's where I put your money. I am a great talking torso, but I want to be more than a talking torso, and I want to do fun things for you. So know that it's being used well, and sign up for the newsletter because if any of these, um, for whatever reason, something happens, something changes, at least I have a way to get a hold of you and you know how to contact me. I don't sell your stuff. I'm not about that. It's not going to go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I erased, I don't know, three or 4,000 emails. I'm like, oh, I don't think they want to hear from me anymore. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm, I need to communicate with you when I have special things that I'm not going to share with everybody else here in the general audience, Okay. You can always work with me in coaching. Go to the consultation page. You can coach with me individually. And for those of you who want to know how to keep the love alive that you've already created, I urge you to read below here in the text about Himalaya. This is free. You can hear my entire one hour course. It's done in small little bites. It's audible. It's an audio course. It's fabulous. They made me sound so good. And I I'm not really allowed to share that material anywhere else. So you're never going to see it on, I don't know, iTunes or on my website. So that was a point of purchase sale that I gave them. And you can listen to it for free for 14 days. Now, don't be freaked out. You're going to have to enter a credit card. I don't want you to be scared by that. These are very legit people. Then if you don't want to continue you cancel. You've got 14 days to listen to me, Elon Musk, um, Malcolm Gladwell, a lot of great top speakers. They are not going to screw you over. It's like five, I don't know, it's like $5.64 a month. It's really good material, well-produced. They've aligned with Big Think, and Big Think had interviewed me uh, a number of times. Really, I mean, <laughs> they're Big Think, okay? They've got some really great stuff. I urge you take advantage of this while we can do it because after like June, I won't be able to give it to you. Okay. You'll just have to buy it and I can't help you. So I like to give you free things whenever I can. Thank you everyone. B Gwyneth. Thank you so much. All the lovely people that contributed. If I missed anything, I will look for it in the replay. I hope I got to everybody's questions and thank you so much. Um, I do appreciate it. So we've got to get Nika's toy. I have a little bit of shopping to do. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Have a blessed week. And we are thinking about your partner here today. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Bye-bye now. Mwah!